I still have people that I do not like, but when push comes to shove, I have to have their back. An injury to one is an injury to all. And if you can't accept that, your definition of a trade unionist is completely wrong. We've got another caller on the line. So let's uh, see what they've got to say. 714 area code is uh, is who we have on the line. Uh, 714, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Adam, Jake, good morning. My Jose Francisco Negrete out here in Anaheim, California, waiting for Hurricane Hillary to hit, to touch up here. I think it's supposed to arrive Sunday, yes. Monday. So Y'all be safe. Those me yeah, sure enough. I mean, I saw that on... Uh, 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 a Twitter this morning, and it's supposed to be, I mean, a really, really big storm. So sure enough, brother, uh, get safe and, you know, do what you need to do to stay safe because that is looking really dangerous. And Los Angeles looks like it is, uh, which is a huge city, That and Anaheim is just north of Los Angeles. Is that right? South, south. We're south south of, of Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Yeah, it's like a, a good... To get to downtown LA, it get takes me a good thirty minutes, like twenty to thirty minutes without traffic. With traffic, forget about it. <laughs> I'm right, listening yeah. to I'm listening to the Shop Talk podcast. I'm listening to to the the Valley Labor Report. <laughs> uh, um, because you're just stuck in traffic. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. But it's it's funny. I text one of the sh- uh, shop stewards yesterday. I asked him, "Hey, are we going to work on Monday?" And and he sent me the, the the start times for next week. So I think UPS expects us to to go to work during a hurricane, but I could be wrong. Mm, <laughs> wow. Yeah. You know, the the packages still 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 have to get out there. But uh I just wanted to call to because I guess uh Teddy Ostra was on and he mm-hmm. made his predictions on the on the national master agreements. I don't know if he did about the supplements. But no, he didn't make any when predictions it comes to on the, supplements. Okay, so when it comes to this or, uh, organized vote no, you got to remember, and the, the original vote no happened in the 2013 contract. Mm-hmm. You know, when when UPS wanted us out of the UPS company healthcare plan. So it starts there. It passed, but 18 supplements got rejected and. Sean O'Brien, who was leading those negotiations in the supplements, still with uh, Ken Hall, pushed them through. So now you have that. What started in 2018, go into 2018, and everybody knows what happened with that. National Master finally got shot down, but they still implemented it anyway through an archaic two-thirds rule that they that they found in the Constitution. Now we fast forward to now. Now it's it's different. Right. There's no there's not people hitting the gates like they were in 2013 and 2018. Now everything's through social media. Hmm. But to say there's no organized vote, no movement. If you you want to say organized as you want to point like this is the, the figurehead of the vote, no movement. You know, I would love to say teams to mobilize this. Mm. But we're just we're just we're just coming up, you know. We're we're not there yet. But you got to remember, you have what happened in the past, 2013, 2018. So a lot of people that are always skeptical when it comes to negotiations with UPS. You put that on top of what we just went through during during the pandemic, mm-hmm. during the lockdown, during a time when peak when it's usually are the heaviest point, the heaviest time for for uh, UPS, it was peaked for almost six to seven months. Packages everywhere. Drivers working 12 hours, 14 hours, you know. The 9-5 list was probably getting violated every day. Their UPS was paying it out. They didn't really care. They were making hand, you know, money like crazy, hand over fist. So to pay to pay some, some penalty, they didn't really care. You know, right. so you have that discontent. You have the discontent of the economy inflation going up, going down the roller coaster. You have interest rates going sky high, you know? So yes, there might not be a figurehead when it comes to the vote. No, 
But sure enough, there is, it's, it's, a, it's like a tree. When you cut off the tree, what happens? Weeds start growing around. Hmm. This is what it is. It's just an organic, it's an organic thing that's happening with the vote now. Now, if you ask me, what's my prediction when it comes to national master? It's going to be close. I think it's going to be close. I'm pushing a no vote. I don't. I don't think this contract does en- does enough for uh, for the part timers. Even though some people want to call me crybabies, but wait, what it is? It is what it is. You know, it's. I don't think. I don't think. Uh, I think it's gonna be close. I I, I can't talk because it's but the last two weeks the IBC has been uh, on this campaign of on social media through. Uh, through uh, Berlin Rosen, a PR firm, and shouts out to them, man. They've been putting out some very uh, stylish, uh, you know, media on why to vote yes. Mm. You know, so you have the IBT so making all these videos to 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 vote yes, right? And you just see the con- and you and you see the frustration of of uh, some members. Mm. You know, they they don't. They don't want to be told how to vote. We just came from 2018 where they rejected the contract and the, con- and the contract still got pushed down our throats, you know? Mm. And I just wish that people would, would recognize the organic nature of this vote no movement. But it's funny, yesterday I was hearing another uh, podcast concerning UPS and they had a principal officer and uh, Western Package of uh, he, he's a principal officer, but he's also the Western Package uh, director for for the Teamsters. And he said, basically paraphrasing, that once the tentative agreement came out, it seemed like somebody pushed a vote no, and everybody jumped online. They were saying mm-hmm. that it's a it was a well it's a it was a well thought out, well planned, organized vote no. And you just got to read between the tea leaves of, of what, of what's happened, of what UPS workers have, have gone through in, in these last, you know, four years. And on top of that, I forgot UPS has been making record, record profits, but mm. that 8 billion on uh, stock buyback. Come right. on. We're, we're not stupid out here. Drive, UPS workers are not stupid. You know, we see what's happening. And like I said, there's no figurehead. I would love to think Teamster mobilizes, but most of it is an, an organic uh, discontent and outrage of what's happened. And then, you know, you, you call this contract historic. Members are like, wait, this is not historic. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what happened to the catch-up raises? You only got zero. You don't get any catch-up raises if you have less than five, five years seniority. If you have five to ten years seniority, you only get 50 cents, what they call longevity pay. If you have 10, 10 to 15, you get a dollar. If you have 15 years, you get a dollar 50. Seriously, nothing in that, in that tent of agreement reflects what all of us uh, at UPS, all of us teams, all of us rank and file gave towards the corporation during a period of uncertainty and fear. Nothing. Oh, oh, oh well, there is one paragraph. It's article 26 and, and uh, emergency reopening, where they talk about a pandemic. But sure, how it doesn't it doesn't show up on the economic portion of it, the meats and potatoes of the contract. So, mm. like I said before, I think this con- I think the national is gonna is gonna be very close when it comes to the Southwest uh, sort and package rider, which is a supplement out here, which I, which which uh, I fall under. That I, that's gonna get rejected. Mm. You know, it, I just because Southern California has. <laughs> the most teamsters and right. out of because it's us and arizona and new mexico mm-hmm. so i think i think that that will go down the western region supplement which deals with the all the west both basically that might probably go down if you ask i don't know i've asked some people about the southern supplement which pertains to the south they kind of see it as probably uh going down as well mm. uh the uh, Atlantic metro area, which deals with Maryland and and stuff like there. I forgot what other two states that that might go down. So it's 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 going to be it's, it's going to be interesting next Tuesday to see how it is. And if I 
if my predictions are wrong, I'm sure people are going to say stuff to me, which is A-OK. But if, if I'm reading between the tea leaves, I just think this, the Nationals are going to be close. I think it's going to not – I think it's going to be a – a vote no, but it's it's going to be it's going to it's going to be close. I don't see it any other way. Even though we're pouring millions of millions upon millions to push a yes vote, which is ludicrous. Why are you spending you know forty five forty five million on trying to get this sucker passed? You know it's you know and then anybody that has objections to to the uh, to the master contract or to any supplement as well. We're called liars. We're called misinformationists. Mm. We have an outside agenda. We don't work for UPS. Oh, this is the this is this is the this is the, the times that we're living in. If you don't agree with with you know the the IBT, you know you're 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 just you're called all this and that. You and the, come on, just so we have a disagreement or we don't see we don't mm-hmm. we don't look at it the way you do that we're 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 lesser than we're not lesser than we're teamster mobilize is no outside organization of uh, outside agitators we work at ups god damn it mm-hmm. now show us some show us some respect don't talk down to us and when i was hearing that that uh principal officer western package director yesterday going going on some uh show hearing him the way he was speaking you know, it was just, it was just, I, I, I couldn't believe what I was listening to, but it also got me pissed off. See now, okay, if this is the terrain that's going to be laid out for for us, okay, this is mm-hmm. the terrain, this is terrain, and it, this is what's going to happen. Because it's, at the end of the day, regardless how I feel, I'm still a teamster. You know, I, I still have people that I probably I do not like, but when push comes to shove, I have to have their backs. Right. That's what we do. An injury to one is an injury to all. And if you can't accept that philosophy, I, your, 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 your definition of a trade unionist is completely, is completely wrong. You know? And then tomorrow, we'll, Teams to Mobilize will have a, uh, a, a webinar as well because we are pushing a vote no. So if anybody wants to hop on, you, you're more than welcome to. It's uh, 1 p.m. Eastern. So be 10 out here in the Pacific. Uh, you could check us out on uh, Instagram, which is Teamster Mobilize, on Twitter as well, Teamster Mobilize, but the Mobilize is spelled O M O B L I Z. And you can check, uh, check us out on our website, TeamsterMobilize.com as well. And gentlemen, gracias for the opportunity, the space you have given us, especially a bunch of us uh, that are pushing a no vote to to lay out our argument on why we should, you know, vote no when it comes to this UPS tentative agreement. Yeah, a- absolutely. We're, uh, you know, since we're since we're not UPS workers, since we're not Teamsters, uh, you know, we do we we feel like we do have uh, responsibility to, you know, basically allow you know have have an open forum for for our sisters and brothers on either side of the issue to you know. I think you guys might be. I think I think you guys might be considered outside agitators. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've been called that a time or two. <laughs> I, I, yeah, you know, I, I work at UPS, but I guess I'm an outside agitator. I didn't know that. There you go. <laughs> but it, there you go. it's new. It was news to me when I finally heard it yesterday. I was like, wow, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> All right. But Thanks gracias, for the call, Jose. Gracias, I appreciate gracias, it. Gracias either way. Gracias. You guys have a great evening. Have a great weekend and enjoy yourselves. Yeah. Appreciate you. You too, man. And solidarity. Solidarity. You too, brother. You All too. Right. And yeah, y'all stay safe out there on the West Coast. I know y'all aren't necessarily uh, used to getting hurricanes like yeah. like down on the well, Gulf we're Coast. Well, we're, we're not used to We're not used to a hurricane, so I don't know. I don't know what to expect. You're like, I'm just like, okay. I'm just I'm just trying to brace myself. That's why we're going to Costco right now and buying what we need to buy. But mm-hmm. I've never mm-hmm. experienced a hurricane, other than uh, the only hurricane I ever experienced was uh, was basically going to my contract meeting and having people just rain down, rain down thunder on me because expressing mm-hmm. my views of you know twenty five is the low for part time or the we won't know. But that's right. the, but that wasn't the, that wasn't a physical. Uh, a hurricane but that's that's being in the eye of the storm kind of like thing but but thank you gentlemen and you guys have a great weekend of solidarity appreciate you you too thanks 
Uh, we've got a, another caller on the line uh, from a 214 area code. All right, let's get 214 on the air. Hi. 214, uh, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Brian Catmore. I'm calling from Texas, Dallas, Texas, out of local 767. Brian from Texas, out of local 767. Uh, what's on your mind? Yes. Well, I was just watching a, a different clip online, and I was observing what the individual was talking about. And he was, you know, he said he was in on the bargaining committee, so he was actually sat in on the bargaining committee for the first time with the board. Hmm. And he was talking about cooling sleeves for the to for the drivers to be replaced as AC. That's what they consider AC for the drivers, cooling sleeves, which was very disappointing to hear. The increase of pay it was good. You know, it could have been a little bit better. The non four six, you know. Take, eliminating the forced work days was mm -hmm. good for the drivers as well. But our hubs and the vehicles got serious problems that they don't want to address. I don't know. Uh, it, it came from the majority report is what I watched. Mm. And he said that he was with the company for, you know, he was a, he's been in the business for 20 years or whatnot. And, uh, but he couldn't even remember the name of the device, which is a dyad, you know, that the drivers use. You know, it took him a minute to pull that up. So it was just really disappointing to hear that they're only going to get cooling sleeves for AC. I don't, I, I believe the company needs to upgrade their vehicles and they need to do a little bit of upgrading to some of the hubs that are extremely hot, like in Arizona and in Texas. And, you know, it sounds like California is pretty hot as well. You know, like big propellers, Helicopter propellers, you know, that I've seen in some of the gyms that I've gone to. Those things circulate the air. Some of the newer warehouses that I've been in have those big propellers. Mm. They circulate the air really well, and it keeps the warehouse cooled down. and keeps the gym even cooler. <clears throat> but uh, as a bargaining tool, I don't know if uh, the UPS, because I am a UPS worker. Hey, five seconds. Just wanted to say that this is only possible because of our donors. If you want to see more of this, then consider donating yourself at tvlr.fm slash donate. UPS looks like it is. Well, if 20 of them walk away, that's okay. We'll replace them with 15 or, you know, 10 that will possibly stick. So we don't care. Well, a big strike like this is a little bit different. And as a bargaining leader, I don't know if they've ever even approached Amazon with the fact that, since they want to be in Amazon so much or so badly that they could have went to Amazon and just spoke to them and been like, well, look, we're striking. This is going to affect them really bad. They're going to lose customers. They're, they're going to lose, you know, if they want to lose employees, they could lose employees. We could bring all that business and customers to, you know, I don't know if they could have used that as a bargaining tool or not, but it's mm -hmm. something that just crossed my mind that maybe a bargaining leader could have took to Amazon, you know, just for, just for the sake of their workers. And right. seeing if Amazon would have been on board with that, and then they could have moved into Amazon and then, you know, increased Amazon's volume, increased Amazon's customers, and increased Amazon's employees as well. I don't know. But it was just thought is something I wanted to put out there. I'm not in total agreement or disagreement with the the new tenant. <clears throat> um, there's just some things that I think really stink about it. And the cooling sleeves is really, that's just a no. And if they're not going to upgrade the hubs, that's a no. If they can't upgrade the trucks, it's just, it's really sour. I mean, it's good that the drivers are going to get that day off because they're going to get more time with their families. So that's good. That's positive. It's good that the pay rate's going up a little bit. That's positive as well. You know, but the rest of it just sounds like they're going to go straight back to abusing their employees just disregarding their safety and health completely. Cooling sleeves don't do nothing. I've had the cooling sleeves around my neck. I've had them around my head. They don't do nothing. They don't serve for, you know, they really don't serve that well. So I think that they should push a little bit more and maybe just stand a little bit more firmer or something against the company. And the, 
as for the warehouse workers, I think we all should just keep filing grievances on a weekly basis and monitor the supervisors because this seems to be a mismanagement big time in the warehouse. That's what I've observed in the years that I've been there. I ain't been there, you know, no decade or nothing, seven years with the company. But that's what I've seen, a repeat pattern, constantly, consistently mismanagement, cutting corners just to make their numbers. And when one corner gets cut, that that forces the rest of the, it's a domino effect. All corners get cut after that. So they're disregarding everybody's safe and health just to cut a corner. Mm. And it causes piles up. It causes damages to people's property because everybody gets in a rush. Things fall on the ground. Things get trampled on. People get stuck. If we had emergency evacuation, some people are stuck. They don't know which way to go. They can't go nowhere. I've witnessed quite a few different things in that warehouse. And, uh, you know, um, it's good to hear that a lot of the things and a lot of the issues that we brought up at our local hall has gotten addressed. But on the same hand, it's still disappointing, mm. you know, because it's it just seems like they're going to go right back to or just resume in the same type of abusive labor and disregarding everybody's safety and healthy. You know, just that's what it sounds like to me. That's all I got to say. I appreciate you guys taking my call. And I appreciate yeah, you guys. absolutely. Th- thanks for calling in. And, and and I'll say that you know I think that the uh, the interview that you're talking about with the majority report was I believe with with Vinnie Perone, uh, principal yeah. officer of Local 804 up in New York. And I think that uh, that the, you know the the cooling sleeves or some of the ventilation and stuff with the drivers. I think th- those are all going to be offered to every driver, but. But, but I think what the contract did was was that every new UPS truck is going to have AC. So it's not that every single truck oh. is going to be outfitted with AC. Uh, there are going to be improvements to every single AC truck. But uh, but but I think that that new trucks, all new trucks, are going to have AC. That's oh, my yeah. understanding. Um, well, that's and, important information I wasn't aware of. Yeah, yeah, I th- I think that's the case. I think that's you know obviously go you you know go back and read the tentative agreement um, just to make sure. But but that that's my understanding. Um, and uh, uh, really appreciate your uh, call yeah, though, and call. and also appreciate you saying uh, what you did about having to file grievances and, and yes. monitor your supervisors because whether this contract passes or not, I think that's pretty essential and something we've heard overwhelmingly mm-hmm. from Teamsters on all sides of this issue is that. Uh, there are issues with working conditions with UPS and the way people are treated uh, and the conditions in which they're working. And so, yes, being active on the shop floor with grievances and holding these supervisors accountable is, is absolutely essential. And so, uh, you know, that's you know what I was mentioning earlier, that either, either way, however this turns out, uh, it's going to take a stronger union and more power, more organizing. Uh, to really improve people's lives. Yeah, and well, you're not going to be able to, you know, there's there's not a contract in the world that's, you could get all the language that you wanted in there, and it's not going to address yeah. all those issues. It's going to take, no matter what the language says, it's going to take uh, workers at each facility being willing to put up a fight and enforcement because we even with even with the terrible language that that you know UPS teamsters work under now uh, UPS violates it all the time mm-hmm. right so so no matter what contract you end up getting it is absolutely you're totally right it's going to uh, it, it's going to require uh, you know militant activity yeah activity and and organization to to hold the company accountable yeah. So yeah, appreciate the call, right, brother. Thank yeah. you. All right. Uh, we have another caller on the line. Uh, this caller is from a four seven zero area code. All right, let's get you on the air. Four seven zero. What's your name and hey, where doing? are you calling from? Atlanta, local seven twenty eight. I'm a David Allen disciple out of Smart Hub, the Mega Hub. Mm, a David can, Allen um, disciple oh, out of uh, out of Atlanta. He is the one that does the Roswell Hub, right? The on YouTube. Uh, you got it. Yes, cool. I like I, I like that show. Uh, Roswell Hub on, on YouTube is they're a uh, you know they're uh, a program. 
on the internet that talks about you know UPS Teamster issues, and I, I think that they're generally pretty kind of tightly focused on what's going on over there in Atlanta. Uh, but obviously, they have they've been more nationally focused during these negotiations. So uh, so excited to hear from somebody over there. Uh, wh- what's on your mind, brother? I want to. I want to um, cover a couple of things I heard the other callers talk about. I'm a feeder driver, so I mm. leave the state. And I just left Knoxville Hub. So I go to different hubs throughout the state and other states. And one caller from out west, he's right, but he's embellishing a little bit. We have a lot of misinformed members, and they're going to vote yes. They didn't even read the contract, and the uh, campaign of the yes vote is working. Mm. It's going to be very close, but the campaign of the yes vote is worth it. Interesting. Interesting. So uh, I'm now curious, my, uh, <laughs> how do you feel about that? <laughs> um, I hate to say this. Our union played the percentages. So like one of y'all said, you can't get a perfect contract. So... Both sides have to play the percentages on on, on winning, hmm. and this is a it is, is a historic contract. People need to stop saying it's not. It is, but the bar is so low, it's hmm. easy for it to be a historic contract. That's what people fail to realize. The bar is so low. Right, I hear what you're saying. Kind of like with Biden being the most pro-union president in, you know, in my lifetime. It's like, yeah, well, you know, probably he is, but that's not. Uh, so how was that? <laughs> so it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of things. Um, was I think the national is going to get through. Hmm. I think some of these supplements going to get voted down, and even in local seven twenty eight, I hear a lot of people who are reading is not very happy with it because. Pretty much everything new in the seven twenty in the uh, Southern Supplement is in the national, and we used to have a, a regional contract to special do special things for your region that other regions don't go through, hmm. and they didn't do a lot of changes. And a lot of people are not very happy with that. Hmm. Interesting. What about the uh, uh, what about the the pension? Uh, how do how do you feel about the pension improvements in the Southern Supplement? A lot of people. I get mixed reviews on it. Mm. Anybody who's not eligible for retirement right now is kind of wishy washy. But anybody who's eligible for it within this contract is very happy. And that's, that's usually typical, par for the course. But the pension is actually good. I mean, we can't knock Sean. Sean can't get everything fixed in one contract. I mm. met him like four or five times and had uh, personal discussions with him. And the guy can't get anything fixed on the first on the first on the first deal. People got to be realistic on that. Well, and I think that's a that's a good point to bring up that like you can be a vote no and just and believe that there is more left on the table and that you know we we should keep fighting and all that. You can you can believe all that while still not necessarily like questioning the integrity of of folks, you know, or assuming bad faith uh, on the other side or whatever like that. And and so I think that's really important, you know, whichever side folks are on, you know, these are your union brothers and sisters, uh, and you're going to have to work together uh, to build a stronger union regardless. Um, and so, yeah, just being understanding of where folks are coming from, because there are a lot of disagreements and some significant disagreements and some valid arguments coming, you know, from from different perspectives. So, uh, yeah, I think that's that's important what you mentioned. And that will come in when your supplement comes in. Very important is your supplement supposed to protect you from the national where it's holes at. So more people need to be. I hope they listen and understand this. You can't really knock the national when you have in your region have a certain issue that your region should be covering. Like I'll give you a prime example. Uh, 720 local eight where I'm out of, and I went around and asked people. I, I, I told people this is how bad this is how bad our supplement is. We just getting MOK day off in this new contract, and MOK is based out of Atlanta, where UPS is based out of. And our last meeting, we was bragging about that MOK is now an honorary member of the Teamsters. Mm. We should have been leading the country in our supplement having MOK off 30, 40 years ago. Right. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. That's a good point. 
Well, are there any issues uh, a- a- across the South that people are that people were wanting to see in the Southern Supplement, or is it just kind of a generalized uh, feeling of you know maybe we wish we had gotten more in the Southern Supplement? Oh, we could have got more. Oh, we got got. We could have got. Yeah, we could have got more. Oh no, we got. We left stuff on the table, which is just true, especially in the sub uh, in the Southern Supplement. Prime example. New York, I'm not sure exactly what locally they ate something. They had more time off than us, more option days and sick days. They mm. gained even two more. We didn't gain any. And we had people going around saying that the company won't budge. They wouldn't give it to us. They don't believe in that. And I said, that's a total lie because the company does believe in it. They don't, they don't believe you're willing to fight for it, so they don't give it to you. Mm. But the other reasons are willing to fight for these things. They get them. We asked for more time off, and they told us at our last meeting the company wouldn't budge, and they didn't realize a lot of us already did our homework. We just wanted to see what they're going to say mm. when they gave it to other people. All right. Well, uh, I, I appreciate your call. Is there anything else that, that you had on your mind? Oh, yes. Uh, one of the things that uh, why people are saying the no vote is kind of this – not reason is everybody got company plays percentage. They know, reason why they gave into a lot of these things. They know majority of the workers won't exercise what's in the contract to fight. So they allow the company to take advantage of them. And it's a lot of things in the, kind of in the gray area that make, since we got the last contract forced down our throat. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a feeder driver. So this don't pertain to me. One of the things does, um, they have, they have really no, they're going to, create the language just crazy they want us to vote yes on the contract and then they'll create the feeder language after we say yes just like you just like nancy pelosi said you got to vote yes then we can see what's in it they literally mm-hmm. told us that they're going to create language from scratch after we, the deal is um sealed and it's going to protect us and people are not believing that and then the nine five language we kind of see some ways where the company can weasel out of it and they understand some people will get pushed around. So this quadruple time and all that, they're not really worried about it because it's going to be slim to none on people willing to exercise that right and know how to protect themselves because the company going to go after low hanging fruit and fire mm. them. Mm. But they try to exercise some of these rights when you don't know how to protect yourself. That's a good point. Yeah, really appreciate you calling in and yep. and sharing the Atlanta perspective and the feeder driver perspective. Uh no, no problem. I listen to y'all every. I work every Saturday, so I listen to y'all in the truck. And I say, you know what? I keep hearing that guy from the West Coast call. He's kind of right. But I said I need to call in. I was gonna call in next week. I said, let me look down here and and uh, find a number and call him in. But I got one other thing I want to um say if y'all, if y'all mind me sharing is sure. I think it's very dangerous what they are doing. In so many ways, we opened up a rabbit hole. We have a sleeper team. That's the ones go on all 50 states and leave for five days. And one of the things we did to try to stop contractors from taking, taking our work is forcing from the bottom when you first come in with no experience and go all across the United States and drive and drive with a complete stranger, even their team's the member, you might not get along with them and you force to be on the truck with that person mm-hmm. for the next 18 months. And we know it. Both of y'all have no experience uh, driving on these roads, and I, I, I don't. I think it's a recipe for disaster. And that's in the new contract. Yes, it is. They, Was it in they, the old I contract? Believe, no, we didn't really have no language like that in the last contract. Now they having it where to protect us from get, losing our work, because a lot of guys like me have a little bit of seniority or, or have more seniority. We don't want to be on the road for five days away from our family. So mm. to have those runs covered, they having people in lower seniority covering them, and they had the least amount of experience behind the wheel, and they are they are partnering up with people they really don't even know for five straight days. That does not sound fun. <laughs> no, not at all. So yeah, I br- appreciate you bringing yeah. that up. Thank you. They force on it for eighteen months. Mm. 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 Wow. Yeah, definitely appreciate you bringing that up. And, uh, yeah, thanks thanks for tuning in every Saturday. We really appreciate that. And uh, South's got to represent. So, yeah, call us anytime. Yeah. 
You got to get the you got to get the local stronger. That's right. right, man. That's right. Keep up the good work. I did get a a message responding to the feeder driver from Atlanta uh saying that they don't they don't think that what he was saying about the feeder drivers is is exactly right. Uh the message that I got said, "My understanding is the A driver, the senior driver can pick their B driver for sleeper teams, and all regular feeder drivers are bid by seniority. UPS trains all feeder drivers in the same training program." Uh so so it it may not it may not be exactly right that that you're just paired with a random person for 18 months but obviously uh you know I haven't read that part of the contract so what's what's the thing to do if you're a UPS teamster read the contract and consult with your and uh, read the with supplement. your yeah read the contract read the supplement talk to your local union figure out exactly uh, exactly what the deal is there because I I'm not going to be able to tell you so Right yeah absolutely read the contract read the supplement uh study up and uh vote yeah <laughs> definitely vote and and have conversations um that's and very I, very important yeah and i appreciate that message uh that that correction always happy to, yeah yeah always absolutely. happy to correct the record you just saw a clip from the valley labor report we are live every saturday morning from 9 30 a.m till 12 30 p.m and we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project, and you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm.